Hello fellow cinephiles, 90s film guru here. Thanks for joining me today. Today I'll be looking at Copland. This came out in 1997 and was directed by James Mangold. And this was his second feature. The first film, Heavy, which starred Liv Tyler, um, was sort of a more dramatic piece and a very independent film that he really struggled to find a distributor for. And then he went on to make this film, which I think is quite a huge jump. And the fact that he also wrote this film was another big draw to him as a filmmaker, I think, in a lot of ways. I always find it really fascinating and interesting when filmmakers go from a really small independent film and do something bigger and really accomplish something. And that's exactly what they did with this film. It was made for 15 million and went on to make 63 million. So it was a very successful film. One of the very few of the 90s films that was actually very successful. And it's a film I've, all, I've returned to time and time again, and it's one of my favourite in this sort of genre, and also one of my favourite Mangold films. It's kind of interesting, James Mangold mentioned in an interview that he was happy with the film that he did, but he just really felt like he wanted an unknown for the Stallone character, for the, for the sheriff, for Freddy, to the sheriff of the town. And look, I can see why he wanted to do that, I'm not taking away from Stallone, I don't think he thought Stallone was bad, but it just felt like, Stallone carries a lot with him and to, for him to portray a character like this and make it believable, I think some people struggled with. And also, like if you made him an unknown, that's kind of, you're not quite sure what this character is capable of, where with Stallone, you know what he can do and what he is capable of. So I can see what Mangold was going for, but I think Stallone is fantastic in this film. This is definitely one of his best performances. He's very subtle and nuanced. And just the way he, he sort of plays his character. And he put on a whole heap of weight for it as well to make it really believable. And I kind of like that. It felt like Stallone was trying to do something different and step away from all the action movies and sort of films that he's known for and do something a bit different. And that's exactly what this is. And his performance is absolutely fantastic in this, playing the Sheriff Freddy, who's really great. He sees everything. He knows everything that's going on. He's a really fantastic character. And I really love what Stallone did with it. It's such a simple film. It follows the story of Freddy, played by Sylvester Stallone, a local sheriff who lives in a small sort of quiet town with a group of New York cops who make themselves at home in the town. Freddy sees and hears more than he wants to admit, even turning a blind eye at times to certain things. But after things start to escalate, after certain things happen, Freddy can't just sit by the sidelines anymore. He decides to take a stand. And that's exactly what he does. And it's fantastic that when he does take, decide to take a stand. Besides Stallone, this has a really wonderful cast. They talk about like really great ensemble cast. This is definitely one of them. You've got Robert De Niro, you've got Harvey Keitel, Robert Patrick, Michael Rappaport, Peter Berg, John Spencer from West Wing and a variety of others. It's such a great cast. They all work really well and effective with each other. And I really loved seeing De Niro and Keitel on screen together. They haven't really done much or haven't really seen them working together since probably Mean Streets, which is a big breakout for not only Harvey Keitel and De Niro, but also Scorsese. And I, I just, it's good to see them on screen. They only share one scene but it is really great and you get to see them interact with each other, which was really cool. It doesn't come close to the scene with Al Pacino and De Niro in Heat, but it is still good to see them going at each other, being adversaries more than, more than friends. What this film really shows is the skill of James Mangold to go from a small film to a bigger film and to write it and direct it and sort of to produce such a really fantastic, great little thriller. He does a fantastic job with the movie. And there's just something about the way he directs and writes. And he did talk about how the script was based upon where he grew up. He grew up in this small town where a lot of sort of cops lived. Very similar to what we saw in the movie. So that's sort of his real inspiration. So it's from personal experience that he was able to write the script. And he's definitely one of the best scripts that came out in the 90s. And I think he did a fantastic job writing and directing this movie. I've kind of always liked James Mangold films, especially his early stuff. His later stuff, not so much. Indiana Jones wasn't great, but there is a variety of other films that he did, especially his early career, and this is definitely one of them. He sort of hit his pinnacle, in my opinion, with Walk the Line, which redefined the, the biography, music biography f um, films in a lot of ways. 
and I think he's he is a very solid director and I like when he writes and directs. What he can do really well is make big films, but it's when he makes these smaller smaller films with a smaller cast and a simple idea that they are, they are the most effective films that he makes. Like I've mentioned, what I like most about this film is Stallone's performance as Freddy. He's sort of this sad, quiet little man who who really wanted to be a cop, but due to an incident that happened where he tries to really save someone from drowning that causes him to lose his hearing, he sort of is unable to become the man he wanted to become, so he takes a job as the sheriff. But he's not really in control in the town. He just sort of, it's like he's just putting on a badge playing cop, you know? All the cops in the town are the ones in control. He's just sort of tries to keep a peace among them all, but he's really sort of pushed around and, and, and stood over in a lot of ways. And he lets a lot of things slide because he, he uh, respects these guys and because he really wants to be one. Because of that, he sort of turns a blind eye to a lot of things. And there are so many things that happen in the film, he just lets go, but ultimately he takes a stand. And when he does is when the film sort of becomes a really powerful study of this one man taking a stand against a group by himself. And it reminded me of films like High Noon, you know, or Outland, where they sort of, these sort of sheriffs or the people in charge have to take on the big bad guys by themselves and no one wants to help them and support them. And it's about how they achieve their goal of taking them down. And this has one of the best sort of endings, in my opinion, when he does take a stand. They blow out his other, he other ears so he can't hear at all, so it's all done in sort of silence. It's just him walking through the town, blood ripping out of his ears with a shotgun in hand trying to save this guy, trying to, to stop these cops, these corrupt cops from doing bad things. And just the imagery of that, him walking through the town, the silence, the use of sound design in this scene is really fantastic. The way he dispatches these guys really, uh, really quickly, but ultimately is sort of it's set upon. And about how he sort of defends himself in that regard. And he's just such a great character in my opinion. I, I like him so much because of the fact that he knows what's going on, he's not silly, he sees it all, he, he takes in everything that happens, but he just doesn't get involved, he doesn't want to get involved, he doesn't feel he has the right to get involved, and when he does, it makes him such a fascinating character. They really underestimate him, that's probably the biggest thing, and then he proves himself really brilliantly in the film, and it's like, because of what he does, when we get to the end of the movie, it's like life has been breathed back into him and he feels like he has purpose and feels like he's in the right place and he's happy with the person he is and the job that he has. He has good moments in the film. He only really has one friend in a lot of ways and that's Ray Liotta's character, Gary Figgis. He's not a bad guy, but he's not a good guy, but he's trying to separate himself from the other, from the group and I kind of like that. And he's the only sort of one that befriends Freddy and supports him and listens to him and, and helps him. And in the end, he sort of is this character where you think, oh, he's not gonna do anything. And then he stands up with Freddy and, and, and helps him in a really great sequence in a great way. And I love what he does in the film. And it's just a testament to Ray Liotta to be able to play not quite good, not quite bad, just but, but walking the fine line between both. And he's really skillful at that. And it's really cool to see him in this role. And he has a good chemistry with all the cast, especially with Stallone's character. De Niro's character, Mo, is kind of interesting. Internal affairs, and he's trying to prove that these guys are doing bad things, um, but he can't, and he sort of goes to Freddy for help, but Freddy isn't able to get involved at that point in time, and the case falls apart. And then when Freddy comes to him saying he, he, he wants to get involved now, he knows it's too late, and De Niro's character, Mo, is really harsh and hard on him saying, well, you lost your chance, we'll never get this case. And that sort of pushes Freddy to take charge and, and be the, the, the man of the hour. And it does cost him a lot, but he does it anyway. And it's kind of interesting to see that. Like, De Niro's not in a lot of the film, but when he is, he's really cool to watch. There are a number of great scenes in the film. There's a sequence at the start where Michael Rappaport's character is involved in something, and that is the catalyst for what transpires. And I kind of really like the way this sequence is shot and done with it a car chase and a shootout, it's really cool. And you get to, this is where you meet all the characters. This is where all the characters appear. Even Freddy's down near the water watching what's going on, like they're all, all there. And you get to see the type of people they are. And in this one moment, this one sequence, you get to see exactly who these men are, and I like that. 
I think Michael Rappaport's really good in this. I think he's a very underrated actor. If you want to see one of Michael Rappaport's great performances, watch Higher Learning, John Singleton film. He's fantastic. He's, he's fantastic in that film. Very sad and tragic character, but he plays it wonderfully. And I think he's solid in here, like all the rest of it. Robert Patrick's great. Peter Berg's good in his little scene. Like, they're all really great. And obviously the other scene I was talking about is the end, a shootout at the end and, and Freddie taking, taking a stand and all that transpires in that sequence is really, really good as well. And it's just like, I like the little nuances in it. Like these little bits of information we learn, we see characters doing certain things. And we get to learn who they are through their actions. And they, these sort of really great little moments throughout the movie express that. Especially with the Figgis character who does something extreme in order to try and break free, which causes tragedy. And it's kind of very interesting to see why he did what he did, but you understand why he did it. And it's kind of interesting. He, it makes him such a fascinating character. There are a variety of other scenes in the film that are really great as well. There's something else that I noticed about the Freddy character is, is the whole film's from his perspective in a lot of ways. Most of the scenes he's in, even when this stuff happens on the bridge, he's sitting down in near the water below the bridge and he's sort of our eyes into the world. We see things through his eyes. He's not in always in every single scene, but it just feels like it's from his point of view as he's very aware and we're very aware of what's going on and what he, who he is and what he's actually doing. It's sort of, not negative, but the thing that niggles at me a little bit is even though Freddy takes a stand, it's really cool, there's just sort of the build for it isn't strong enough. You know what I mean? It doesn't take its time, it's sort of sharp. It's like he's observing everything and then that's when it happens. But, but I just feel like we could have spent a little bit more time, the film could have been a little bit longer. That's something that Roger Ebert talked about, how there was a lot of story there, but not enough run time to cover the whole thing. And I slightly agree with that, especially with, with the evolution of the Freddy character. So there is, I do agree with that. And he only gave it two stars, so he wasn't a huge fan of it. With Siskel was a big fan of it, and especially the screenplay, and I could see that as well. But that's the only kind of thing that sort of niggles at me. I just wish we spent a bit more time with him and showed his complete arc and had the film a little bit longer just to convey that a little more effectively and in reasonable time than sort of kind of rushing it a little. But the, what this film really proves is the skill of Mangold in, in, in his writing, his directing, his casting, and this, this, this film that he, he put out and how successful, and how successful it was and how it really propelled him forward once again after an independent didn't film onto this into many more other movies. So this is a great catalyst and push for him as a director, I think, in a lot of ways, which I really love that about the film. I've just really always connected to the movie and I really love what transpires in it. And I go back to it every now and again because I think it's a brilliant film. And it's one film I've always wanted to talk to, so I'm glad I had the opportunity to talk about this film. And I do recommend it if you haven't seen it. I'd give Copland a four out of five. Brilliant film, really well done, real captured. And in the end, it's a very solid film that is well written, directed, and acted by everybody involved. Has a great ensemble cast, a very simple and effective story. And, and, and Stallone really shines in this film just because of it's something different for him. And I would go as far as to say this is probably his best performance. And I know there's Rocky and Rambo, but there's just something about what he does in this film that's very different to those characters and the performances he gives in those particular films. Anyway, that's all from me today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please hit subscribe on the bottom, follow me on Letterboxd and Facebook. Otherwise, until next time, enjoy the movie.